Welcome to the presentation on understanding the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement provides information about a company's cash receipts and cash payments during an accounting period, about a company's operating, investing and financing activities, about the impact of accrual accounting events on cash flows and it allows us to assess the firm's liquidity, solvency and financial flexibility. An analyst can use the cash flow statement to determine whether regular operations generate enough cash to sustain business, whether enough cash is generated to pay off existing debts, whether, firm, whether the firm is likely to need additional financing, whether unexpected obligations can be met and whether firms can take advantage of new business opportunities as they arise. So at this stage, let me mention the fundamental point with the cash flow statement. So this is roughly analogous to the income statement, but since we use the accrual basis of accounting when we come up with the income statement, it, there is a chance that the revenue that you generate is not equal to the cash that you receive from customers. And hence, it is possible if you have recognized a lot of revenue without having received cash, you have a high number for accounts receivables and a high number for net income. What the cash flow statement allows you to do is see how much cash you are actually receiving. And a lot of financial analysis happens based on cash flow projections because ultimately that's what determines the value of an organization. So in the context of your CFA exam, it is extremely important to understand that the cash flow statement is divided into three components, cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing activities and cash flow from financing and you need to understand what uh, act, what activities need to be categorized where so basically cfo consists of cash resulting from transaction that affect a firm's net income or most specifically the core operating activities of a firm so for example cash received from customers will be a cash inflow related to cfo Cash paid to suppliers and employees is a cash outflow in this CFO category. Any money spent on various operating expenses. Trading securities. So if you buy securities that are classified as trading, so short term uh, stocks that you might buy, uh, any interest that you pay and receive. According to US GAAP, interest paid and received falls under CFO. Dividends received. So if you've invested in stocks and you receive dividends, that would classify as CFO if you are using US GAAP. Taxes paid also fall under CFO. So you need to understand that under US GAAP, all these items fall in the CFO category. Cash flow from, in from investing consists of cash resulting from acquisitions or disposal of long-term assets and certain uh, large investments. So fixed assets or long-term assets, any money spent on them would refer to, we would call CFI in the cash flow statement. And when you sell those assets, the money that you get would be an inflow of cash uh, documented in CFI. So any fixed assets, and certain equity and debt investments. So if you buy a 20% stake in a given company, that would be an equity investment and that would be considered a cash flow from investing activity. Similarly, if you issue a loan, that would, uh, so, so by issue, uh, issuing a loan, I mean you are lending money to an organization. So you are a bank and you lend money that would be considered a uh, investment. CFF consists of cash resulting from transaction affecting a firm's capital structure. So any debt and equity financing, any principal paid on debt. So you borrow money, that's uh, cash inflow in this category, CFF. When you repay that debt, that again would be uh, outflow of cash in the CFF category. 
treasury stock operation where you are paying money to shareholders that's also cff dividends paid is also cff now what are the differences between ifrs and us gap you just saw that interest received under us gap is classified as operating ifrs gives you the flexibility to categorize it as operating or investing depending on your business any interest that you pay so you borrowed money and are paying interest according to ifrs this can be classified as operating or financing depending on your situation and under us gap this has to be classified as operating dividends received under ifrs could be either operating or investing under us gap it has to be operating dividends paid since this is money going to shareholders ifrs gives the flexibility that it can be either operating or financing whereas us gap insists that this is financing these four are the most important in general just a quick comment on bank overdraft overdrafts so under ifrs these are considered part of cash equivalents under us gap not considered part of cash equivalents so they are classified as financing taxes paid in general we can say are considered operating so if you recall from an earlier lecture we have said that us gap is more uh, rules based uh, framework and notice that there are strict rules about how to categorize versus uh, ifrs is more uh, principles based uh, so there is more flexibility in this framework non cash activities a non cash transaction is any transaction that does not involve an outflow or inflow of cash so conversion of bonds to stocks stock splits etc so non cash transactions must be disclosed in either a footnote or a sum supplemental schedule to the cash flow statement an analyst should incorporate non cash transactions into analysis of past and current performance and include their effects in estimating future cash flows so now let's talk about uh, the cfo and there are two formats in which the cash flow from operations can be presented the direct format and the indirect format which we will talk about later in the direct format we basically convert the accrual basis income statement to a cash basis income statement so effectively we are saying that if we received so effectively we are saying that we simply need to record all the operating related cash that came in and all the operating cash that went out each line item on the accrual based income statement is converted into cash receipts or payments the direct method begins with cash inflows from customer so notice that the top line for the operating cash flow direct method is the cash collected from customers and then the approximate equivalent in the income statement you would have cost of goods sold the equivalent is cash paid to suppliers and then all the cash paid for your operating expenses the cash paid for interest this would be interest expense in your income statement here it's called cash paid for interest the cash paid for taxes and after subtracting all these amounts so say this is 100 and then cash paid to suppliers 50 and cash paid for operating expenses 10 cash paid for interest 10 and cash paid for taxes 10 your operating cash flow would be Uh, 50 60 70 80 so this is 20 so this is the rough equivalent of your net income on the income statement but the difference is that this is based on actual cash that comes in and goes out now let's just get a basic idea of how do we go from uh, having a revenue number to figuring out how much cash received uh, cash is received so some basic rules whenever you are dealing with a cash flow statement you need to recognize that a uh, increase in asset is a uh, use of cash so the way you can remember this is 
if an asset value goes up that means that the cash is used up look at this through a simple example say you start a business and initially let's say that your cash is equal to zero and let's say your inventory is worth 20 so this is let's say that at the start of the year 1 Jan 2010 cash zero inventory 20 and let's say your accounts receivable at the start of your business is zero then during the year you sell this inventory for $30 but all this sale is really a uh, receivable so your customer does not pay you so your accounts receivable which is an asset goes up and at the end of the year your accounts receivable now becomes 30 okay so how much cash did you receive from customers the simple way of looking at this is the cash from customers so cash from customer is equal to the revenue which in our case is 30 minus the change in asset or change in accounts receivable the change in accounts receivable is the ending balance minus the beginning balance which is the end 30 minus beginning zero so the cash received from customers in this simple example as you can see is zero so the two three main points to understand here any increase in assets such as increase in this accounts receivable so increase in asset is a use of cash which means that you have to subtract the number on the other hand uh, increase in a liability is a source of cash that means that you would add the number so increase in liability is a source of cash so the simple table that I would uh, encourage you to learn is asset goes up that is a uh, use of cash which means negative asset going down then has to be the opposite which would be positive so the way you can think of this in the subsequent year if accounts receivable really went down from 30 to 0 that means the cash extra 30 came in so you would then be adding that to the revenue so now what about liabilities if liability goes up that from a cash flow perspective is a good thing that means cash coming in and liability going down is a use of cash because uh, simple way to remember it is if liability goes up that's a good thing you are not paying your from a cash perspective that's good so you add to cash and if liability goes down that means you are paying off your suppliers for example and you put a negative related to cash so make sure you learn this very well okay so now let's do some basic calculations cash collection from customers the way you would do this is from the income statement you would look at revenue and let's say revenue is equal to 100 and as I just uh, explained let's say that your accounts receivable your change in accounts receivable let's say is 20 this means that uh, the end value of AR minus the beginning value of accounts receivable let's say is $30 at the end minus the beginning value which is 10 so this is 20 so your accounts receivable went up by 20 that means your cash collected from customers would be equal to revenue 100 minus the change in accounts receivable which is 20 so in this particular case the cash collected from customers is 80 dollars the cash paid to suppliers has two parts so with cash paid to suppliers you first look at cost of goods sold so this would be COGS which you get from your income statement and remember that COGS is an expense so let's say that COGS is 50 so let's just take this as a negative because uh, cost of goods sold is a uh, money out 
and then the two items that you look at for cash paid to suppliers the first item is inventory so inventory is a uh, asset and let's say that in our particular case inventory increased by 5 so if you recall a uh, increase in asset since inventory is an asset an increase in asset means that we have used up cash so that's a uh, minus so since we are uh, used up inventory went up by 5 that's a minus so we put a uh, minus 5 over here and the other thing that we look at is accounts payable since that uh, since accounts payable is related to payments that we make to our suppliers so let's say that accounts payable which is a liability let's say went up by 10 so an increase in liability is actually a positive so that is a that is a source of cash so then we put plus 10 so the overall cash paid to suppliers is minus 50 minus 5 which is minus 55 plus 10 gives us minus 45 so the cash paid to suppliers is minus 45 so the formula that you can think of as the cash paid to suppliers then becomes our cogs and remember that since this is an expense take it as a negative number and then you subtract the change in inventory and you add the change in accounts payable so that's your cash paid to supplier cash paid for operating expenses again the idea is the same in our simple example let's say that cash paid for operating expenses uh, that you paid for all this in cash if not then you simply take your cash ex your expense from the from the income statement and then adjust it based on changes in the relevant assets and liabilities cash paid for interest so here again from the income statement say your interest expense is equal to 10 and since this is an expense we'll call this a negative number and then let's say that your interest payable went up from 5 to 7 during the year so what is the change in interest payable the change in interest payable is n minus beginning which is 7 minus 5 which is 2 remember this is a liability an increase in liability is a source of cash so you do minus 10 plus 2 which is the source of cash so you have minus 8 so the cash paid is 8 similarly cash paid for taxes you look at your tax expense from the income statement and changes in taxes payable and make the necessary adjustments so essentially what you are doing is figuring out your cash collected from customers subtracting all these expenses and then coming up with your operating cash flow so as you see this is like the income statement but we are looking at actual cash coming in and actual cash coming out to see overall how much cash we generated from our operations.